Oh. Boys, she's starting already. Uh, Harley jumping in. Uh, boys and girls, usually we do these on the weekend evenings, uh, <laughs> but we're we're stretching it just a little bit because this is fan week. And uh, you may hear some noise in the background. You may see some of the animals that are uncaged in the background. There may be some cameos in and out. You don't know what's going to happen. We are at, uh, how do I even put this? Uh, Camp Sin. <laughs> we're, we're at Camp Sin uh, over at my love Cindy Hart's place. And uh, we did some lake action. I have 12th degree uh, burns on my effing bald spot. Uh, it hurts real bad, but. We got home. We're kicking out at two. We're persevering because this is going to cap off fan week, baby. This is starting to pop with Donkey Cade and my very special guest. I like to call him friend Eric. I love to call him uh, brother Eric, Roba Fett, if you will. Uh, one, Eric Hunton from Parts Unknown. One, Eric Hunton. Welcome for joining fan week, capping us off, and uh, talking some wrestling and Eric Hunting, my friend. Dude, it's an amazing, amazing honor to uh, actually be on Kincaid Files. You know, well, I know we do the, the roundtables, but it's been a minute and a half. But, you know, for you and me to do a sit down this way is, you know, this is an honor. I'm, I'm looking forward to this. Well, we share the love no matter what's going on. We'll get into what you've uh, some new projects you've jumped into. Uh, yes, we sir. like to share the love, especially amongst the friends, the wrestling fam. Sometimes they turn into a little more special than a relationship at the events outside the ring. We may get together. And yes, it's been about three cups of coffee since we have done a fan round table. Sometimes we do a fan round table. Uh, sometimes, you know, we just have fun hanging out even outside, again, outside of the ring. And uh, some of the relationships Get just a little bit closer, and right here, myself and a uh, friend Eric has. <laughs> uh, we were going to shows without even knowing we were both going to the same damn shows at one point, probably. <laughs> and, we met without uh, meeting. <laughs> yes, we did. And uh, I know we've spoke on this topic once before, but I kind of just want to refresh for any of the people that aren't aware of my friend Eric here or are aware of our relationship in, in the wrestling world over there. Uh, I met friend Eric. <laughs> Ironically enough, through friend Summer, uh, and <laughs> uh, she was holding the old uh, TRP championship of one Teddy Goods, if I'm not mistaken. This she is true. Was the the ring, uh, the the belt holder, the the belt bearer for yes. when Teddy Goods came out during his match, and I sat next to friend Summer, and of course you know me, boys and girls. I don't care who I talk to. I'm surprised I haven't been taken away in a van with no windows that says three Rangoon, crab Rangoons on it. Uh, so, I mean, you know me. I don't care who I chit-chat to. Sort of chit-chatting a friend Summer. My dad goes, who the hell is that girl you talking to? I go, I don't fucking know. He goes, you're going to scare her and or get arrested. I go, no, no, no. We're good. We're good. We're friends. And that's how I, <laughs> I ended up uh, meeting friend Eric because friend Summer is – go ahead. <laughs> well, this dad said to his daughter – Hey, who's your friend over there? And she says, oh, that's friend Don. And that's where it started from. That was where it started from. Four uh, and a half, five so years ago. Yes, and running strong, my friend. And yes, I am yes, doing an interview, Big Jacob. Uh, yes, we have the, the, again, we have the rugrats. The animals are running amok. It's okay. It's I'm okay. Surprised. I don't know if you've seen my post on the way home because my love, Cindy Hart, was driving us on the way to and fro, said uh, second lake day in a row we did back to back lake days holy shit uh two of them pulled a sleepy billy did you see my pick oh. of the two pulled a sleepy billy <laughs> i missed it i missed it <laughs> uh, i don't know uh, after this take a look see i think you'll enjoy that um i don't know do how that. you're running around right now friend eric holy shit <laughs> Uh, my they re-energized <laughs> Yes, they, they have their second or third wind today, if you will My love Cindy Hart has come out and She's taking a break, she's got dinner starting We're doing an interview with friend uh, Eric Brother Eric, bro Buffett, if you will Protein shake, brotato chip uh, RTD to brief 
R2 D bro. R2 bro. R2 R2 D bro. No, R2 mm. R2 D2 bro. R2 I, C3P bro. That works. C3P. Too? Some shit like that. I don't know. We try to get clever. We're not that We're clever, stupid. We, <laughs> yeah. Like, that might be the, the title of this episode. We're stupid. <laughs> Woo! Uh, so from there, uh, yes, I've had a hell of a fine day. Like I said, I got 12th degree burn. You could take like jumper cables maybe and the radiation that comes off this sucker right now, you could probably power a power grid for an entire city right now. So uh, <laughs> I, uh, had a hell of a couple of days. I could probably use your head to light, light my brand new smoker I built. <laughs> put together <laughs> uh, uh, smoke. you know I know I'm a skinny guy but smoke beef I'm there uh, please <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, for, and just a PSA smoke brisket not meth uh, boys and girls <laughs> do such things okay? just PSA just putting that yes. out there mm-hmm. uh, friend Eric I yes, had sir. a hell of a fight day but uh, this isn't about me this is about friend Eric and getting to know the fans and, the, and if you, I, know, I know you've been watching but there's been a theme and again Thank you for watching. I love I love when when the friends watch, but there's been a theme of fan week. It seems and it just kind of happened organically is the connections that we've made yeah. between the fan and wrestler. That dance that we do when they come through the curtain, we boo on them, we cheer them, we lift them. Uh, they like to pee on us and boo uh, uh, at us and flip us off and do stuff to us as we 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 played this dance. Uh, but we've been talking connections. It seems the theme of this week uh but uh friend eric we were talking about how we met and our connection being friend summer uh the yeah. nucleus if you yeah. will i'm yep. going to talk about one more nucleus that's a, a, a another uh thing uh, another nucleus how we became friends and and that's pvp pioneer valley pro wrestling yes sir uh you've been going for uh probably a bit longer i'm not sure no if, you you, you, longer. you started before me Okay. You started before and me. I, I was uh, June June of seventeen, of okay. two thousand seventeen. I, I was like early sixteen, maybe late fifteen. I'm not really sure. The the, the brain, the one brain cell can only handle so much data. <laughs> um, uh, first off, I know I didn't wear no cool merch. Uh, we did the lake day, so I just wrote, wore what I wore today. I'm, I'm rocking the old Destroyer seventy six tie dye, uh, but the Kincaid piles merch. Oh my goodness, my heart. I'm going to shed a tear, my friend. Holy F. Thank you for uh, that. That's beautiful. I had to do it. I had to do it. Absolutely and, uh, gorgeous. You, you know, to touch on what you were saying, you know, we, the, the connections you were saying, you know, the, the fans here and the fans there, you know, we, we, we like to boo, we like to cheer, and we make these connections with them. I think I've made a few, not patting myself on the back, but I think I've made oh. a few connections, you know, Absol- and I absolutely. love them all. I love them all. Uh, let, let's spin back. I know I stuck in the old Kincaid Files merch and it's a shameless plug. How can I not? Um, let's spin it. back to uh, <laughs> Pioneer Valley Pro Wrestling. <laughs> and you know, this isn't the only Eric wearing this shirt. <laughs> That's such a beautiful rendition made by uh, one beautiful, talented sister, LC. Uh, yes, custom made pop of friend Eric. That is such a beautiful rendition. I absolutely <laughs> love it. Spectacular. Uh, she would show me the transitions from yeah. even just a damn a damn head. She would show me pictures of heads for F sake. It would kind of scare me a little bit. I'd have to <laughs> maybe horror <yeah>. movie. <laughs> yeah, she would send me pictures of heads and be like, "Hey, how does this one look? Or how does that?" I would love seeing uh, the. the as they were coming to life, the evolution. Uh, beautiful, yeah, the evolution of these pops that were being absolutely beautifully made by the talented Laura C. Love, love, sister L. C. Yes. Uh, but yes. PVP is our uh, is really our nucleus yep. of why yep. we were both there, why friend Summer and friend Eric and and Papa Kincaid and myself were at these shows. Yep. Uh, nice. We go there at that time. I mean, times were different at that time. You go yeah. there, you pay ten bucks for pretty much uh, general admission, fifteen bucks for front row. Now it's probably basically around 20 bucks front row, 15 admission general, something like that, that PVP does. Around there. Around there. They haven't, when, when the world shut down, they had, did not come back for a yep. full, like, two years here, my man. Yep. And they have just yep. recently come back. And I know you've been seeing uh, what's been happening uh, firsthand 
Now, I yep. want to talk one specific thing because it's a big deal over at PVP and the culmination of what was happening with WMW, uh, Western Mass Wrestling, and PVP because they are sister companies. Yeah. Uh, talk to us because I, I want to get filled in as Jackie G. I had him fill us in with NEW. Yeah. Fill us in this whole thing with going on with uh, Sexy Whoa. Jesus Hammer Tunis. And, 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 and I heard, I heard through the grapevine being one, uh, the future, that he's not yeah. even called Sexy Jesus anymore. Fill us, that, uh, fill us in on that, too. Well, he, he's, I know he's going by Hammer now, again. I, I know that he did in the past and whatnot, but I, I'm, t- I'm taking it, you know, I don't have insider information, but I'm taking it as he's on his single run, he's doing Hammer Tunis. Okay. And uh, he, he wanted it to be about him. And uh, that's the way I take it. And uh, he, when they came back, when they came back, he was on the shelf before that. And he's like, look, I'm back. I'm, I'm, I'm better. I'm stronger. I'm healthy. You know, I feel better than I ever have. He swerved us on, oh, this may be the end. And, you know. If you're into wrestling, you, you would respect a good swerve. And we got one. Absolutely. Yes. And, yes, absolutely. you know, he came back and he challenged Scotty Wilde for that WMW. And they wanted to make it a, a merger uh, mm-hmm. of, of the titles, uh, and, like undisputed, if you will. And mm-hmm. they had their match. There may or may not have been some shenanigans. <laughs> it may or may not come on <laughs> leaning more on may than may not uh, and, <laughs> but in the end hammer pulled it out and you know took took the championship and now he holds it and you know and there's now at the next pvp event at the uh, zombie hideout this upcoming saturday uh the, the closers are coming back and they have an open challenge. Oh. Hammer and Bacon have an open challenge to any tag team in the New England area. And as far as I understand, nobody's answered that challenge yet. Okay. Uh, I have seen. I'm looking forward uh, to that. <laughs> yeah, because, I mean, before everything kind of fizzled away and, and Hammer was injured at that time, Big Bacon went and started right. doing his own thing, uh, hitting the beyonds and whatnot. Yes. And then he, he got a bit injured over there yes. himself, Big Bacon. So yeah. there's been, you know, uh, some perseverance through their careers right now in singles competi- uh, competition. But uh, I know you weren't there, but I was there at the tail end before the world yeah. shut down. And they were kind of yeah. uh, doing the WMW deal. If I'm not right. with, I always do. Yeah, I always mix them up. Which one was the last show? Because I did a PV, uh, I did a PAPW, and then the very next day, that was a Friday. Then the very next day, being a Saturday, I went to either it was PVP that or was, WMW. That was WMW because that's the one that Jared Silver played. Like, like, <laughs> uh, that's what I said. Um, yeah. That's the one that you went to. That was the last show, and that was WMW. Okay. You and I were at the last PVP show, and that was like the month before that. Mm-hmm. And, and that that's the one that I had gone through and I, we wanted to go to that last show but we couldn't take that chance mm-hmm. we just couldn't take that chance because that's when stuff was amping up we couldn't do it Yeah. and um, I was kind of building up to with the closer splitting previous because of whatever's going on then they right. both get injured then they kind of now we see that they're both making their way back now they're connecting reconnecting as the closers Talk about being a minute. I can't even remember the last time there were the closers, man. I mean, for real. It, Jesus, I don't even know. Uh, it, well, it's been two years since we've had any PVP, and it was before that. It was probably a year before that because they, they got injured. Uh, they both kind of got injured right, right beside each other, mm-hmm. and that was, I want to say, 19. I believe I'm not a hundred percent on my, you know, my calendar, but I think that was like 19. Okay. It, it, w- one of them got, uh, I, I think it was uh, hammer got injured at Blitzkrieg uh, during a tag match with uh, team tremendous Bill Carr, Bill Carr and uh, 
and uh shit. I lost it. I lost his name. <laughs> <laughs> but Team Tremendous is one of those tag teams that don't really come They're around as often. Anymore. They, right. And they they weren't coming around as often as they used to because they went in two different directions there. Right. right. Um now uh, I, I don't want to use previous names to what they are, but it, it right. I'll just say this one word, uh, Dutch. Uh, yeah, might give right. you a, a, a helping hand. Well, right? that, that that was Bill Carr, but then yeah. <laughs> I can I think it's da- it's Dan Danny um Dan Barry. Dan Barry. Yes. Why? I don't know why. I <laughs> I love the guy too. <laughs> the, um, you no. know how you got the one? I, I have half a one. <laughs> uh, now I bring up the word connections followed yeah. by uh, PVP. And I know we started with Hammer, but right. I really want right. to talk about this connection that you have absolutely made with uh, this. In- I want to even go an endearing connection outside the ring with one Johnny Idol. Uh, now this guy was uh, all sorts of hot in PVP, big fan favorite. The whole nine yards was really doing something for himself over there, having a great time. Did a couple other promotions, but you know, he was getting a little older in the tail end of his career, so he wasn't very, very active, but he did some stuff and then he retires. But in the midst of this, he's a musician himself. Um, he starts jamming, doing some acoustic stuff, and there's been some things that's really specially happened between you guys. Talk to us from before he retired while he was still actively wrestling till he re- when he retires he starts playing the music kind of take us through this journey of your friendship because it's turned into a real legit friendship it, from fan wrestler to two friends right now uh, yeah. take us through that look our first event we didn't know who to cheer or boo we didn't know anybody but this is your champion. He comes out. He got attacked by Wild Man Congo. Okay. That's got to be a good guy because that guy is scary. So he's <laughs> got to be the good guy, you know? And we're like, all right, we're going to cheer this guy. And everybody else is, you know, cheering, you know, what, you know, Johnny, Idol, you know, whatever. So it's like, okay, we can get behind this. This guy's cool. And, you know, he finishes off with a pile driver. I'm all in. You know, that's a, <laughs> that's a throwback move right there. So... I'm cheering him. Our second event is at Max Cap. He's hanging out in the ring and he's got the belt draped over the ring. And I like take a selfie with the, the belt. He says, oh, get up on the ring. Dude, you show me love with the championship. I'm like a kid. I was 40 years old. I'm like a kid again. You know, <laughs> so it, from then on, you know, I'm tagging him in pictures. You know, we took a couple of pictures in the ring at the next event and with the championship. We got to talking, we you know, chatting or whatever, and it just became natural. And and that that's what it really is, is you know, we have common, you know, common thread. We got to watch that whole last run of his right up until he lost it to uh now Rip Bison. We'll leave it at that. Uh, you know, he lost the championship to him, and you know, that that was his last match. He was done. Well, I didn't want to lose this relationship that I had started. You know, so he starts a podcast. I think I was one number one subscriber, <laughs> you know, and I was in. And then he, you know, during the pandemic, he was doing these punch uh, porch front concerts uh, on Facebook Live. I was there every Saturday. Anissa and I were together every Saturday. We'd watch. We asked him, we requested that he play a certain song. He learned it. He plays our song for us. So when he goes to breweries and he plays, he he will play our song for <laughs> us. I had him build a cigar box guitar for me. Really? You know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, one second. Yeah. Yeah. Please. Uh, I, I know walking away doesn't make for good TV, but we want to see these things. Look at this, boys and girls. This is a beautiful piece. I've seen it once before. Look at this thing. It's gorgeous. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Harley. <laughs> so look at he that. Look me. at that, boys and girls. Whoa. Yeah. What the heck so Johnny Ida that? built that. I had him autograph it on the back. Uh, 
That was the yes. first autograph he did since he retired. Oh wow. Oh wow. And if you don't that was pretty dark. Well, uh, that one's Harley. That one's Jericho. If you don't know, I'm the, I, got, like I said, got, got the approval of the kids, so you know what, can't go wrong. <laughs> like I said, there's going to be some yeah, in, in-ring run-ins. Now, yeah, Duncan. Okay. Now yeah, Duncan. Okay. Yeah, Duncan. Okay. And Jericho. All right, you guys go that way, okay? Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Wow, that was an <laughs> in-ring run-in. Holy cow! Well, what are you going to uh, do? You know? Uh, yeah. So, special, special stuff right there, my friend. He he's he's one of my favorite people, not just from wrestling, but if it weren't for wrestling, I wouldn't know him. Mm-hmm. And I'm glad that I got to know him. I'm gonna my ball. And you know, yeah, I've gone to see him perform at you know a couple of different breweries or whatever. And you know, I've become. I was told I can call him a friend. You know, I I, I don't want to yeah. use that if I'm not allowed to. You know, just because yeah. you chat with him on on Facebook doesn't mean you're a friend. You're a stalker, you know. You know. <laughs> I know firsthand. They hate that shit. Uh, now, the guitar, such a sweet little piece that is beautiful. Yeah. Uh, yep. Autograph, the whole nine yards of sentiment that he feels, that relationship that you guys are doing back and forth here. Uh, please share the song uh, that you had Mr. Idol learn for you. It's you uh, My Home by Billy Idol. Uh, Billy Joel. Oh. Billy Idol. I know better than that. <laughs> Bill, Billy Joel. Because I said Idol enough times. Uh, <laughs> My Home by Billy Joel. It's kind of a uh, a hidden track, but it's a it's a good song. Uh, and it just, it, it's really near and dear to Anissa and I, and uh, my sweetheart, you know, for those who don't know, uh, who you want to talk about connections. If it's not for her, none of this wrestling stuff right now is, is happening. So... <laughs> Because of friend another Anissa. connection. Yes. Yeah, shout out to friend Anissa. Damn right. Uh, <laughs> hey, just so you know, you got a damn right from outside the room here. <laughs> uh, well, that's why I said it correctly. I do use a little, you know, nickname. Uh, we don't, yeah, we don't want to get, we don't want to get that a foot behind up the ass. curtain. Behind yeah, the curtain. <laughs> yeah. Yes. We don't pull it all the way back. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so these connections, uh, I really wanted to kind of focus on that Johnny Idol just because yeah. of that special relationship guy, you have with him. Yeah. Um, now, I know you're in the background, if you will. You have some pictures on the wall. And this is a room that you've gotten together with some wrestling memorabilia. May it be a figurine or something <laughs> from a, uh, a, a, a mystery crate that you got or yep. – uh, a photo that you had signed by one of the stars at the show, or uh, it could be, there's a multitude of things that you have in this said room. Yes. And I know not to take away or slight anybody's uh, dearness in your heart or their beautiful merchandise or anything. And I know we've seen that beautiful guitar from one Johnny idol. Uh, but what are some of your, some of your true pieces that you like in this uh, said room over here? Uh, you know, it's like, it's it's like picking your favorite kid. It, it, mm-hmm. It's easier when you only have one, but I don't have one. I know. Uh, well, that's why I, I give you a choice. You can yeah, name no. three or five. You know. I have a couple of pieces that represent Logan Black, but were drawn by Joanna Robinson. All right. And I have those pieces over on the wall over there. Those are very near and dear because they, to in order to get them, it supported a great cause. And so, you know, it's special all the way around. Um, I have some stuff from when I was a teenager up on the wall. Uh, you know, a uh, couple of comic books, uh, Stone Cold comic book, Ultimate Warrior comic book. Those are pretty special because it's something I still have from when I was younger. Uh, I picked up a picture from Mr. Tom Burke, who is in the, the thumbnail uh, of Bobo Brazil. Oh, that's, nice. I got that because of my dad. My dad, All right. that was his number one guy. And so when I saw that go up on his auction, I had to have it. And I got that. So nice. that, that's a pretty special piece. And I just recently, <laughs> because I, I, I'm sure we're going to probably get to this guy. And I know I just mentioned him, but I, I kind of have this weird piece of uh, memorabilia. And that's okay. Logan Black. <laughs> that's a pair of his trunks. 
uh, that now, I purchased let, let's, at the last Let's pause event. right there. Yeah. Pa Jose. Yeah, let, let's pause <laughs> with one Logan Black, uh, <laughs> the king of chaos himself, because mm-hmm. that's one of those other really uh, solid connections that you've made that I've noticed uh, from wrestling in and out again, in and out yes. of the ring, yep. uh, to be honest with you. Yep. Um, l- let's talk a little bit more about Logan Black. What draws you to this guy? Because, man, I don't think there's a, a piece of uh, a shirt that you do not have from one Logan Black. I think there's two that I don't have, and it's only because he doesn't have a pro wrestling tees uh, store anymore, and that's where they are exclusive to. So okay. those two I don't have right now. I have, I've gone to his table <coughs> recently, and he says, you have it all. I don't know why you're coming over here. Of course, <laughs> he knows why I'm coming over here. So the last, at the last show, he's unpacking all his merch. He says, you have it all, and he threw those trunks out. I says, are you seriously selling your trunks? And he said, yeah. And I asked him how much. He told me how much. And he couldn't get the number out fast enough. And I was already slapping out the bills. And, <laughs> and uh, you know, I said, am I the creeper that just bought a wrestler's trunks? <laughs> and he told me there's two types of people that buy trunks. And he says, there's the fan who will display them and respect them for what they are. And then there's the people that will you know, sell them on eBay or do something, you know, weird with them. He right. says, I know which one you are. I said, well, I'm sorry. I'm the weird guy, but, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, we, we just have a, a connection that I don't know why I don't, I don't know why other than that. The first time I saw him was at our second show for PVP. He was in a, anything goes a barroom brawl uh, with Teddy goods. And I didn't know who either one of these two guys were because it was our second show. And the whole crowd was behind both of them. So I'm like, I don't even know who I'm supposed to back. (laughs) We got pushed out of our seats. They used my chair in the match. They they went through the soggiest table I've ever seen with a Death (laughs) Valley driver. We went and met Teddy Goods. Didn't even get to meet Logan Black. But then the next time I saw him, I'm like, man, I'm all about this guy. And I'm, I've been all in ever since, and that was five years ago. And, mm-hmm. I, and like I said, I bought every piece of merch that he has to the point where I have to buy the man's shorts. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm, not calling the, I'm not calling this episode that. I even bought the man's shorts. We're not calling it that. Uh, Please, now- don't. Please don't. Please <laughs> don't. <laughs> uh, the king of chaos he's he's a different breed if you will he's yes. he's grittier he's got this edge about him he's about the punk scene he's got the mohawk he's not, not afraid to bleed he's not afraid to use a ladder a chair uh, a table and such forks Bra- yeah thumbtacks brass knuckles i mean he, he's he's definitely a bit grittier than your traditional wrestler but he can go he yes. can go like anybody's business um he's going at the next PVP, he was supposed to face Sammy Diaz. Sammy Diaz is still healing from his elbow or his shoulder. What, his elbow. Yeah, elbow. yeah, dis- yeah disloaded, dis- dis- located elbow. elbow. Yeah, elbow. Yeah. So replacement gets announced. Foggy's going to lose his mind. SWB yep. is his replacement. So now it's <laughs> Logan Black versus SWB, Slick Wagner Brown. Are you kidding me? Are you? I, I already put a title under it. It's uh, Underground Chaos. <laughs> I've already titled that match. It's Underground Chaos. So, oh, man. so I'm all in on that match. You know that. So, yeah, that yeah. that is definitely going to be something. And it's not going. You know, that's not going to be a hardcore match. It could be, but it's not going to be. We're going right. to see Logan Black do what not everybody sees him do. He's going to wrestle, and he can go. He can yeah. go. And, so. and against uh, one slick Wagner Brown. If you're not effing ready, you better get ready. But I know right. that Logan Black he's is ready. always ready. So, yeah, he's, ready. he's always ready. He's one of those guys that are always ready. But yeah. that's a tall order, my friend. We both yeah. know that is a tall order. Pack a lunch. <laughs> Pack a lunch. <laughs> hey, like Bob, like you said, uh, for Bobby Buff, uh, Buffet against um, yes. Silas yeah. Young, pack a lunch. Bobby says, I pack two. He better. <laughs> he better. <laughs> Because we all know Bobby Buffet, he can eat. 
eat, eat, you know? <laughs> so he packs a couple lunches. Uh, yeah, definitely. Pack a lunch, Mr. Logan Black. That's going to be something. Uh, now, you've already mentioned it, but I want to touch upon this. You know, because you've seen more than one episode, how you have stomached my face for more than one episode. I'll never know. And I love you absolutely dear for that. Stop um, <laughs> You know that I'm really, really all about talking about support system with the talent. And without that, it's very, very hard to persevere in the art of wrestling, the dream making of becoming a singles wrestler, a tag team wrestler, whatever you're persevering to be. Uh, but us, the fans, you know, when we have our better half that, you know, they may see it, it's stupid AF because they just don't get it. A lot of the better halves do not get it. Yeah. Okay. Um, but you happen to have a better half that A, does get it and supports your craziness. Uh, wanting wanting to buy the men's underwear, if you will. Uh, so <laughs> you have this not 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 only supporting, <laughs> encouraging. <laughs> uh, you have this support system behind you. We've already given her a shout out, but I had to make sure that we spoke upon one friend, Anissa. So please tell us, tell us, because I know the talent has spoken. But when the fans go out and want to enjoy their times, even if their better half is not about wrestling, but supports what they do, going out to these wrestling shows to have their fun and whatnot, talk to us about that support system right there. Well, listen, it, my, our, again, I, I keep referring back to our first show, you know, but our first show was, hey, so-and-so is going to be wrestling. I don't know if I'm going to shout that out yet. I, I haven't decided. But so and so is wrestling. Do you want to go to the show? And I just gave her that look, like, really? And we went to our first independent show together. It was her, myself, and my two daughters. And we had the time of our lives. You know, Matthew James in the middle of it, before intermission or whatever, they're announcing the next show. And. We looked at the calendar on our phones because everything's right there on our phone. Looked at the calendar. Hey, this is what this weekend looks like. Do you want to? Do you want to? Let's go. <laughs> and we were ready to go that day. We, we decided we're doing this. We're in. Nice. And we've gone to almost every show has been her and I together, whether it be with other, you know, our kids or whatever. There have been a few times that she's not with me. And it don't feel right, you know, because we, we bounce off of each other, you know. Yeah. We, and then when we go home, we break the cards down, you know. <laughs> we, we just spent, what, two and a half hours at a show. We spend the next hour ride home talking about the show. So, yeah. 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 I, so I, the support is there, you know. Absolutely heartfelt. I see it all the time. And not only that, we're going to get into one of your new ventures here. Uh, but even in your new venture, she's very supportive and right there with you. Um, I always, always talk about how the fans are going home, doing those drives, because it's not just 10 minutes away from the house. Most times are an hour, hour and a half, two, two and a half hours sometimes, three hours, all depending on how far you want to drive as a fan and even longer. But on the way home, we're chit-chatting about, uh, the favorite moments, the wow moments, the, some of these things that happen. And can you believe that blah, blah, blah did this or a move that maybe a bigger guy should. Oh, wow. We got a casualty back there. <laughs> yeah. The chair, uh, <laughs> the chair yeah, was the, taken out. <laughs> yeah, the chair took a bump. Uh, <laughs> Broken leg. Yeah. yeah the, the chair definitely took a bump. Not your chair. Uh, <laughs> Uh, but yeah, talking about the, the, the happenings on the way home, that's so much fun. It, yeah. I mean, it's not yes. as much as fun as wrestling, but it's this addition that comes along with said event. It's the cool down. You don't yeah. want to just cut it <laughs> yeah. off. You got you to <laughs> yeah. taper down. You don't want to just yeah. quit cold, cold turkey. You know, we, <laughs> yeah. we, 
we, we spend an hour out there and she goes, you're excited, huh? And I said, how do you know that? My, uh, my leg is bouncing up and down like a bass drummer, you know, because I'm ready to go. I, I can't get there quick enough. You got the destination on the GPS. I'm going to beat that time because I want to get there. You know, <laughs> doors are opening soon. You got to get there. We already bought the tickets. We don't need to worry about. It. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, and then the ride home is just yeah. as important. You know, we, we cool it down is. with talking about it. It is. Absolutely. I'm, I'm just helping one of the animals with a chair. That's all. Totally get it. Totally get it. They're all lining up over there. Uh, yeah, check, check, check this shit out. Oh, Lord. I think there's going to be more than one dead soldier. <laughs> I don't know what's going on over there. <laughs> I didn't do it. <laughs> I wasn't the bad influence today. So... Let's jump into the parts unknown thing we've got going on because I know throughout the shows you would take some pictures, slap them all together, and make a video, maybe like a three minute run or so, with some music behind it, showing some of either your most favorite moments or some of the better pictures that you had that you took um, at the show and kind of squash it all together. And you were doing that for a bit, not that you still don't, uh, but. You were doing that for a bit, but you were you were always wanting to do something. You wanted to do just a little bit of something. But what the what the fuck do I do? I want to do something, but what the fuck do I do? Uh, so you kind of gathered some thoughts and you bounced some things off, and you figured, you know, I can take a little bit of footage too, and I can do a little something with it and whatnot. So talk to us about what you have going on now. Well, you touched on it. I started out by taking the pictures. That Again, back to the beginning. That first show, I took like 13 pictures. Now I take more than 13 for one match. <laughs> you know? And I just, I've been watching this for a long time. You kind of get to know what the setup is. You know this as well as I do. You, you kind of see what's coming. So I want to get that shot. So now I'm, I'm planning out what I'm taking pictures. And uh, I go with the technology that I'm given. My phone is advanced, so I'm advancing. You know, like the technology behind it is advancing, so I can do more with it. And I just started taking more and more pictures. The live makes me create a, allows me to create a video. And I do that. And I don't, I'm not taking videos like Kincaid or Foggy does. I'm taking pictures, and I create the video, which is mm -hmm. different. And that's what I wanted to do. I don't want to steal thunder from Foggy, who we need to touch on later. And then, and then you know, you do your thing, which there's nobody that can do what you do because you're nuts, and that's, you know, that's <laughs> your deal. <laughs> but so I do what I do to the point where I've been requested to take photos I've been requested for photos that I've taken. I've been asked by Foggy, hey, I'm not going to be at this show. Can you get me footage? Now I'm stressing out because now I don't want to screw up his show. You know what I mean? So it's all evolved to the point where I started the podcast. And that all started with, I mean, not the podcast, the YouTube channel, where I looked at, I, I went on YouTube and it said I had, like four subscribers. I said, subscribers to what? I don't put anything out there. Who's subscribing to nothingness? It's just the, you know, the 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 rainbow slices across the screen. That's all it was. There's nothing there. So it pushed me. If there's already four people there, there's gonna be a few more if I put stuff out there. And I think I talked to you, I talked to Del Santo. Obviously, I talked to Anissa, and we figured it out, what I wanted to do, and I'm getting there. I'm getting there. I'm not anywhere where I want to be, but I'm getting there. Uh, it, it, ta it, it takes a bit. It definitely takes a bit. You got to find that niche, if yes. you will. Like, I'm a jackass, so I run with being a jackass, and it's kind of gone in my favor somehow, some way. Uh, the ridiculousness, it, yeah. it, it catches on at different places and it's turned into 
those connections we've been speaking on has turned into countless. I can't, I literally cannot count how many connections I've made being a absolute fucking idiot. I don't know how it's happened. I just don't get it. Uh, but we've had a lot of fun yeah. doing said, said stuff. Um, now you touched upon something already when we were talking about the, the car ride, the car ride home and breaking down the matches. Now I've talked uh, time, uh, timeless counts about one PWZ podcast with Rick Del Santo, yes. the prof, our brother, Rick Del Santo. Yes. Himself and now Marcel Williams on the reg. That's they my buddy. Up, your buddy, Showtime. I don't know how the <laughs> fuck that. Uh, Marcel, Showtime, Marcel Williams. Uh, they do something on the reg now. And it's the norm of what other podcasts have done over time doing the breakdowns yeah. of the AEWs, the Raws, the SmackDowns, yeah. or whatever's happening, a pay per view. Okay. Yeah. So they're doing. The breakdowns of the major companies, the major pay-per-views, what we've seen and what we've grown up on, and obviously AEW is something new, so they're blossoming, right. and they're doing the reviews of said platforms, okay? You already touched upon something where Eric Hunton from Parts Unknown, he, or is it from Unknown Parts? Parts no. Unknown? Parts Unknown. Parts okay. Unknown. I, I want to get that correct. Uh, <laughs> what, what you're doing is post event it may not be said night it may be the next day or even a couple days after said event but post said independent uh event not only is yourself but i've seen the collaboration of your better half uh your love friend anissa and you have come together and done the breakdowns of the events, which I absolutely adore because <laughs> I love seeing you guys going back and forth and trying to remember stuff and some of the, <laughs> the banter that goes on when you're put, because boys and girls, none of this shit is pre-tape. Hit the record button, <laughs> do it on the fly yep. and have some fun because let's be honest, I've said it a thousand and probably a million, a billion times. I'm built like a candle. I shatter like peanut brittle. If I can't make fun of myself, who the fuck can? And when you're doing this stuff live and you goof up or you do this banter and it comes out so organically and it's fun like that. Just keep going. Don't change. Yes. Don't ever be like, I want it polished. F polished. Uh, let's have some fun and let it be a little bit unpolished. So uh, with all of that being said, why the breakdown of the events? Uh, like this, I guess for torture, really, <laughs> because now torture. we don't, because now we don't talk on the ride home because we don't want to screw up the ride home. <laughs> no we, material. You don't, don't want to screw up the. <laughs> 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 but when we get home, we're still fired up, and we want to talk yeah. about it. She doesn't care to be on the camera, but it works because it gives me somewhere else to focus. She sits yeah. off camera. We talk each match. We break down all the matches. We get through them. We'll give shout outs to the referees, the ring announcers, you know, promoters, promotion. And sometimes we go off, off grid. You know, we'll go off the rails and we'll talk about this for a little too long. Yeah. But then we'll get to the end and we'll also pick a match of the evening for each of us and a performer of the evening. Not necessarily a wrestler either. It could be, you know, again, a ring announcer, a referee, uh, in, you know, somebody does a run in, whatever. It could be anybody. But we, we break down the whole event. Why? Because this is what we're doing. This is where we're going. We're not going to AEW. We're not going to WWE. And I can watch them, and I do, but it's not as exciting as when you're there. You know that as well as I do. When you're there, it's a different animal. You're, it's a vibe. It's everything. And it gets us juiced up, and we talk like we're excited, like we were there, because we are. And it's just, we bounce off of each other. We've had a, you know, we've had uh, Olivia, her daughter, my stepdaughter, on with us she wanted to be on camera so she sat beside me 
she gave her parts because and her her favorite wrestler of that e- event was uh, at Blitzkrieg was Hornswoggle, you know, <laughs> and what a good dude, what a good dude, you know. I I I kind of had a preconceived notion of how he was going to be, and I was wrong. I was one hundred percent wrong, and I'm glad I was. He was a good dude to her and you know to other people too, and it, it made it made it worth worth it. So we, we want to do more of them. It's just can't get to every show. You know that as well as I do. Otherwise, right. we'd both be at a show tonight, you know. <laughs> we can't do it, you know. Yeah, you can't do them all, that's for sure. Um, I, I hope I, I answered your I, question. <laughs> no, 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 you, you did. And, and, and I, dig, I dig it because that element of Anissa not being on camera, I think it actually works even better. And it's yeah. even a little more funnier when the banter starts really kicking in. And, and it's not, you know, it's not like it's a you're getting whole my facials. You're getting my <laughs> facials, but you can hear her, what she's saying. And we we're us. We don't change because we're on camera. We right. are who we are. We're not changing. And yeah. you you know better than anybody how silly <laughs> we can be. Because let's face it, this is a stirring the pot, but this is a Quasi pot and roast, <laughs> and we'll just leave uh, that for. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, now bringing the kids, I know that prices have changed as of late. Post uh, King COVID, <laughs> King COVID. Do you see what I? Did? Uh, no, 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 no. Um, I know things have changed post King COVID with prices and whatnot, and. You can't always bring the whole fam and whatnot to the shows. But when you do bring the fam, uh, the kids enjoy it as much as yourself and Anissa do? Oh, hell yeah. But well, first of all, Olivia has yeah. been a uh, – Olivia, her daughter, <laughs> is a diehard wrestling fan. She has always been a wrestling buddy of mine. My daughters, they've grown up with it, but once we exposed them to indie wrestling, they were into it. I mean, our first show, Summer had Bobby Ocean land in her lap. She was in like Flynn. She was like, all right, let's go. <laughs> this is great. You know, this is what happens. And, you know, they love getting the high fives. They love getting to meet them, get picture taken with them. Kaylee being a little one, of, you know, five years ago, running up and giving Jeremy Leary a big hug. You know, didn't know who he was, but oh, I got to give him a hug, you know. So they they are into it, and now our the ones that we take have kind of dwindled because everybody's getting older, everybody's moving out, whatever. And Olivia still goes with us when we can, and Kaylee will go with us when she's on our on my weekends with her. Mm-hmm. So they they love it, they love going, and they love. Even Kaylee asked me, "When are you doing the thing with Don today?" <laughs> Around six or seven. <laughs> oh, cool, cool. cool. <laughs> You know, uh, so yeah, it's great. I, I always, these are the memories that we speak of when we take away from the shows that last a year, two, three, four, that never go away though. That will just pop up by a situation of any kind. Maybe, maybe getting water thrown on you or something. You'd be like, oh my god, you remember that time? Blah 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 blah. You know. So, um, I wanted to spin back to what you were saying. Um. It's not always wrestlers. It could be a ring announcer. It could be this or that. Uh, I, I know we've touched upon it before, but I want to refresh it. And for those people that don't know of my friend Eric here, and if it's a little yakety yak over here, I apologize. But uh, let's touch upon one character and a half. And as soon as you said it's not always a wrestler, the first person I thought of was that <laughs> that damn Alex Cipher. Uh, that dude is a character and a half uh, times two. That guy, uh, the the, and he's got something with the National Wrestling. Uh, I forget, but he's some kind of big wig and tries to tell people what to do over at the shows. And he's got some. Well, kind that was of title. That, that 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 was found to be uh, a fraud. Oh, he 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 was found to be a fraud on that. To to oh okay clear that up. So but, that. That for-profit was a fraud then? Yes, yes. Okay. 
Yeah. Oh, I guess uh, I shouldn't have donated to that garbage then. <laughs> well, you know, hey, we all throw money away somewhere. I bought a man's trunks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, man. But let's, let's talk about the putts. All oh, of that, bringing putts. that the, the putts. Listen, you've had two sign guys on this week. Yes. Two sign guys. First guy, apparently I've met and didn't even know it. And neither did he. Because <laughs> we were at the same show together. Yep. Hottest day in the world. Anyway. Yes. And then you had Joey G who, you know, he's great with his signs. He, he pokes his fun and everything. I've made two signs since going to indie wrestling. And one, the first one, was the putt sign, which I got <laughs> called out by by Don Kincaid and had that bus run over me. Thank you. <laughs> All right. <laughs> no, you're not. <laughs> okay, so, <I'm> not. <laughs> and I made that one up, and I printed out a bunch of them. And I went in. Because it became a thing. It was an organic thing. Everybody was chanting putts, putts. Hi. All right. And so, <laughs> <laughs> so I made a bunch of them, and I handed them out at a show. Here, 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 here. Everybody loved it. Okay. My brother Larry always had the one that I gave him and always brought it to all the shows. I would yep. get messages the day before or day of the show. Hey, do you have any signs? <laughs> yes, I have signs. I will have them with me. <laughs> to the point where they're still in my truck, Don. They're still in my truck. I still have some in my truck, and there's some over on the desk over there. I would uh, take I, them. I would always take one, and I would like throw it in the ring before he would be getting in the ring, and he'd see it and he'd crumple it up and throw it. You know, you get to play along with these guys. It, that's the yes. intimacy that we talk about with, of independence wrestling. You get to know these guys. I've gotten messages from him about these signs. <laughs> not going to say what they've said. I'm just going to say I've gotten messages about the signs. No, we don't have to pull that curtain back because that could be a, a flipping nightmare. Um, with the characters that we were talking about, and I brought up Alex Cypher, the association with yourself and these signs putts. That also brings me to the old face page because if anything, that guy is always active on, on the medias, especially when they came back, you know, obviously when they weren't doing a whole lot, he would trickle here or there. And, but now there's material, there's storyline, there's stuff to be said, there's pictures yeah. to be shared. Yeah. He shared a picture with something like a putz over his forehead or some shit. What did he share? I Apparently there was an Alex Cypher page or something and he disowned it and somebody else took it over. And now there's all these slanderous pictures of him <laughs> with the putts on it. I don't know who's doing it. <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't know that to be fact. I don't know. But, <laughs> um, but somebody's doing something. It's not me. I promise it's not me. I don't have the time. To, <laughs> I don't even have time for my own channel. I'm not going to take care of some slander page. But I follow it and I comment on it and I have fun with it because uh, I love to give the putts a hard time because uh, it's a national pan if, pastime. Yes, I was going to say if there's one thing that is definitely on uh, on one of your things to do is give the putts the business. That is for uh, sure. You, you like to steer, stir the pot. I like to poke the bear. You know, I mean, what are you, <laughs> you like that? <laughs> Eric Hunting poking the putts. That's the title of this episode. Oh my God. Great. I'm poking the putts now with I got Eric heat. Hunting. Yes, poking now the putts I... with Eric Hunting. <laughs> now I got heat. Great. <laughs> oh, that's good stuff. That's a fantastic title. We've gone through three titles. That's the one today. Went through two, uh, three titles and one beer. <laughs> uh, by the way, Ali, your hair is so soft and beautiful right now. It looks spectacular. I just wanted to point. I know nobody can see that. I'll just no, not yours, not yours. Uh, <laughs> oh, by the way, we uh, spoke of Logan Black. We, we spoke of Logan Black. Uh, shout out to Logan. Ah, yeah, uh, the old Maxi. Maxi. Yes, that's uh, his choice. Yes, a fave of one Logan Black. Anyway, go uh, ahead. No. I'm sorry, I cut you off. No, 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 no. 
And I know we've been kind of focusing on, and you've mentioned Blitzkrieg, but I know we've been focusing on the PvP because that's where, you know, basically, well, just in general, that's your home base. That's where you've seen most of your shows, probably. That's where you've gained to know. Home base. Yes, that's where you've gained to know most of the wrestlers. And then you've started branching out. Uh, Talk to us about the couple promotions that you've branched out and checked out, if you could. Because, and the reason why I asked this question is because when you mention these, if the, anybody that's watching has never heard of X promotion, maybe we can get them on the old keyboard on the face page and right. get some more new viewers on said promotion. Yes. Ah, uh, well, the first outside promotion I went to was Blitzkrieg, thanks to our buddy Ron Schluter. He invited me along to a Blitzkrieg show. I had the time of my life. Then, uh, zero one USA Northeast mm -hmm. by uh, run by Anthony Green. That kind of fell to the wayside when somebody got signed. <coughs> Can't blame a guy for doing, you know, following his dreams. You know, <laughs> it it sucked because those were the shows that were in my backyard. The yeah. closest shows I go to, and they're not there anymore. <laughs> <laughs> the most pump that I've ever heard you when you're like, dude, they're right in my backyard. And I'm like, dude, that's so awesome because now yeah. you don't have to travel an hour, two hours. <laughs> Yet and the first show I went to, that hot, hot one, it took me an hour to finally get to that show because I had other running around to do. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it wasn't a short, short travel. But anyway, <laughs> zero one. Again, that fell to the wayside, but you never know. You know, who never. knows what might happen? You know, yep. never say never, as they say, right? That's right. uh, then got uh, Grind Pro run mm -hmm. by Rip Grind Bryson, Bryson and Delmi Exo. They put on an amazing, amazing show. The production value that they put into it, the mm -hmm. it, it kind of has a, a J Japanese wrestling uh, vibe to it, where they use the the, the single corner pads. All right, Zero One did the same thing. But, uh -huh. you know, it gives it a different look. They have a, a, a special entranceway, lighting. It's, nice. it's really cool. They put on it. I went to their very first show. Unfortunately, they seem to run on Fridays. I work nights. I can't go. And, and uh, we kind of miss, misspoke. It's Pro Wrestling Grind. Uh, if you're looking it up, yes. it's Pro yeah. Wrestling Grind. Pro Wrestling Grind. Uh, and then... I've, you know, I said Blitzkrieg, I said Grind, I said Zero One. Um, where am I missing? I'm missing one. Shut Up and Wrestle. Uh, shut Up and Wrestle and Test okay. of Strength. And Test of Strength. And Test of Strength. And New England World Wrestling Extreme. Yeah, and WWE. You've been over yeah, there. Yeah, I, I, I got to go to... I'm so glad I went to that show. I almost mm -hmm. didn't go, mm -hmm. and I would, I would shoot myself in the foot if I didn't go. And I'm so glad I got to go to that show. You know why? Let's just say Humidor is a very special, special connection for me. Uh, mm -hmm. I love, I love the smoke, spill whiskey, not the beer, uh, not the <laughs> spill blood, not the whiskey. <laughs> This hit a little too hard, Don. I'm sorry. I'm <laughs> screwing up your, your interview. No, 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 no. Uh, there are no screw. There is never any screw ups or wrong answers. Ever, never, never. Um, now, there's a couple connections. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. No, you got right in. There's a couple connections I wanted to definitely talk about before, uh, before we remotely even thought about ending this. Is uh, You've already mentioned it right here with the humidor. Let's talk yes. about Frosty and that whole thing because that became something as well. It did. Uh, second centering uh, appearance that I got to make. I was asked to join because Ron Schluter wasn't going to be there and they needed a third man on the desk. You, Foggy, usually Ron. Hey, Eric, can you make it? I will make it. I made it. Ryan Frost, first time meeting, aware of him because of my first appearance, but also because of Centering and Don Kincaid. Got to meet him. I'm like, from this moment on, this man will never be booed by me. I will never boo him. And I haven't. He's done deplorable <laughs> things. And I have cheered this man. 
He has done. He's hit me and I cheered. Okay. <laughs> he's, he's hit me and I've cheered. <laughs> he hit me with his kendo stick and I cheered. <laughs> I I don't know why we just made a connection. I, I don't know why, but we did, and we talked. We're not far from the same age. We had connected over our age of wrestling. We, you know, and whatnot. And I'm not saying it's more than anything other than a fan, fan wrestle relationship, but it seems to be where he's, he's messaged me things that I don't think he messages other wrestlers. I mean, other wrestling fans, you know, other than maybe you or, or maybe even foggy. Uh, it's, it, he's a special person. He really is. As much as his mother is a saint, that <laughs> apple that apple doesn't fall far from the, the tree. It really doesn't. <laughs> you know, the not the character, the man. The man yeah. is I, I I love Ryan Frost. I really do. Yeah. I, I I don't mean to ruin the gimmick or anything, but he's one of my favorite people. He really is. Right? Absolutely. He he know he he knows where he, he lays with me, you know. Uh, Frosty has touched a many a heart in wrestling, and I know he wasn't sought out when he got into wrestling and started training at the dojo at Touch of Strength. I know he wasn't sorting out to have all sorts of connections with the fans. I know, like, the good guys usually make these connections, and Ryan Frost yeah. obviously yeah. came out as a bad guy, and he's been a bad guy for a while. Now he's changes what. Now he says he doesn't change his way. He just fights different people. and we He just hits different people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So um, we'll just call it good guy, bad guy. Um, so now he beats the piss out of uh, TJ Howell the third, which was an amazing part. It, it leaves. He's got this beautiful piece of my, my heart and my soul <laughs> uh, because I said cat, uh, cold cash is not okay for like fucking six months straight. I think people were sick of me saying that as hashtag where in the world is old jabroni. And I'm still looking for him. Uh, yeah. My, my my first shut up and wrestle. Cold cash. We were all saying cold cash was not okay. Yeah. That was that was one of my I'm like, okay, I'm in. You know. <laughs> I'm I'm all right with saying cold cash is not okay because I believe that man is okay. But <laughs> that piece of trash is not, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's not okay. That is that privileged entitled piece of crap. Uh, and he, he's made me do stupid crap, uh, like running errands with his father's credit card uh, for King like Caddy. lattes. With, yeah, uh, latte, vanilla, well, let's see, van, vanilla something, blah, 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 with uh, almond some shit. I, I, I don't know. He's, he's a sissy. Uh, but anyway, That's not a coffee. That's ice cream. <laughs> uh, yeah, so seeing Frosty touch as many people, uh, my point being is there is no way. And I know when you figure yourself to be a wrestler that you do not, you can't tell your future. You can't tell your future in anything that you do, but there is no damn way whenever he thought he'd become a wrestler that he would make the connections that he has over the course of his career that he has up to now, especially with this whole damn past cross course that has just exploded, dude. I mean, holy shit. Look, again, because he's a good guy now, I feel okay with saying it. The man has a heart of gold. Hey, are you going to this show? I don't know if I can. And then I get private messages. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> that, that, that's frosty for you. <laughs> yeah. One, it's the definition. You know, I, like I said, the character can be, what, wait. What did uh, Drinkwater say on one of the round tables? Frosty's a dick, right? Remember that? Frosty was a dick. He said it like nine times. That's the character. The, the man The man has a heart of gold. He really does. He's a good, he's a good dude. He's one of my brothers. I, I, I love him to death. I really do. Uh, and you posed the question, what did Mike Drinkwater said? And I was trying to... <laughs> a lot through. of things. <laughs> I was trying to go through my data banks, and I'm like, I tried to let it go in one ear and out the other. What the fuck do I know what he said? How the hell do I? I can't remember anything he said. <laughs> I mean, for fuck, for fuck's sake. Man. Uh, 
before I get to that last connection, I want to talk about the connection because we even spoke about it with the future Donovan. Uh, it wasn't a sauna talk. It was more of a poolside talk with Donovan <laughs> this go along, if you didn't know That kid. Oh, my God. Oh, <laughs> that kid. <laughs> That's how you can say it, really. Um, and I know it's been a, a couple cups of coffee since we've had a fan, uh, ran, <laughs> a fan round table. And we've Did tried you to- have one? Did you have one? <laughs> no, just this is just my do. <laughs> yeah, this is like my fourth or fifth. So we're working oh. on, on on high octane here. Um, <laughs> I, I know it's been a while, and it's been questioned how come we don't or why can't we or whatever. And like I said to Donovan, if we can get more than two crickets or three crickets to say, hey, let's do something then yes, we need, you know, maybe a half a dozen to jump on board so we can have fun and do it like we were doing it. And this multi-view, ridiculous going back and forth, me being a semi-mediator, if you will, 15 minutes deep, I would bring in a special guest being a ref Gina Blue Shoes or a Ryan oh. Frost or a, or a fucking King Leon the Six. Yes. Or, oh. uh, I, I mean, the list goes on and on. It was always... I tried to think on some familiarity and then sometimes I would bring in wrestlers that some of you guys or most of you didn't even know because I wanted you to be introduced to new talent and the people that were watching these fan round tables. But we were making some really, really kick-ass connections. Big Juicy, uh, The Future, Mike Mike Dishwater slash Drinkwater, Jim Kulik, woo! Uh, we have uh, Schwag. Brother Bob. Andrew, we have brother Bob who hasn't gone to wrestling in 22 fucking years until he went to that first uh, Battlefront show that he did, Battlefront uh, pro wrestling show that he did, and thought I was either going to get murdered or was part of the show or wasn't really sure. Or both. And, or both. <laughs> um, and we've made these connections. That, did I miss anybody? Oh, shit. Um, you said swag. You said brother Bob. I think that's just about everybody. Uh, yeah. Del Santo. Oh, Rick Del Santo, the prop part of the round table. Yes, can't, sir. Can't forget. Yes, sir. And technically, Foggy is a member. He is, well, yes. Well, but, you know, he joined he, us he, for one. He's all about his pictures. Foggy Schmoggy on the round table. Foggy I mean, Foggy. really. Maybe that'll be the title of this episode. Foggy Schmoggy. Foggy. <laughs> <laughs> That's four. That's four now. <laughs> uh, but oh, the fan shit. round tables were always uh, tons of fun. Always got great information out of the special guests. We always had a blast talking not only indie wrestling, but we'd splash in some of the stuff that we're seeing on the pay-per-views, uh, being the WWE or even the TV. Uh, but there was a mixture because yes. we wanted to talk wrestling in general. Yes. You know, there was only well, two the rules. Was whatever. Shut down. Yes, the world was absolutely shut down. Um, and at that time, there were no fans. We were talking about the situation with that and our personal stuff, what we were doing during the day. Or, uh, you know, when when Big Juicy is at home, you know, does her and her better half uh, fight the cat? Do they do the moves on the cat? Uh, we, we threw in all sorts of random shit because it was just a bunch of friends that went, went to wrestling that yes. couldn't see each other when the world shut down and we got together and did this thing. Now, there was a bunch of them. I want to say there was about 30 or so of the fan round. Had to be, I want to say had to about be, yeah. so, yeah. Because um, there was a couple that, you know, were unexpected. There was the butt-dialed one that I wasn't a part of because <laughs> I was at work, but my phone was blowing up. <laughs> I'm like, what the hell's going on here? Then there was the one that didn't happen because somebody gave me the keys to the store and the store blew up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, boy, did we speak on that one? Uh, but the, <laughs> yeah, the connection... yeah, you did. <laughs> uh, we even had an award show uh, where I watched <laughs> that back recently, and I'm trying to watch it while my better half is sleeping and trying not. <laughs> To bust out laughing out loud. <laughs> and I watched it the first time. Oh, uh, my God. I did, I, did, uh, uh, I did the future a favor because he said, I see all the stuff back there, but I don't see your special ward. 
<laughs> so I broke out the special award. For one yeah, don't bring that out now. You got kids in the audience. <laughs> no, uh, it is at the DK Wasteland. I, I, I'm about 60 miles away or so. so. <laughs> uh, that was that was a, a money episode, but I think it was the last <laughs> one. I'm not it 100%. Possib- it's very possible it was. We had Karen Bam Bam on there with oh. the with the. And I had the, you know, the special our grace. Our grace. Our, yes. I was at that, that show. That was my first test of strength show when yep. the roof blew off of the pavilion. Woo! Yes. I, was I don't know else. how Riders is still a place after that event because <laughs> we destroyed that place with the, 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 yeah. the yeses and the boos and the cheers. Oh, my God. I, I, I am so glad I went to that show. Uh, on that aw- that show was absolutely and and I want to say that show specifically is where my highest viewed video. Oh, you know what? <laughs> the camera has been the camera's been looking a little different. I was wow. wondering why, but uh, now I I figured out why. I'm uh, sorry, I didn't. I need just need to adjust. She still needed to adjust. But um, we had uh, that show was amazing because I think that show birthed the highest viewed of. Uh, video that i have on my channel right now it's kind of millions like 2.3 million views being karen bam bam the champ at that time in a rematch going against uh no then is when she won the belt yeah when she won the yeah. belt or I, yeah. I forget the exact scenario but i think that is the one that garnered me my my highest video so far highest viewed video which is just absolutely mind altering I, I mean mind altering do you owe her um, money for that Oh, sorry. I love Bam Bam. <laughs> if anybody, Dana Man would be up my ass for that revenue. Uh, <laughs> uh, and and to speak on such, I'm glad you didn't use the the facsimile, the the pop of one Eric Hunting to do this interview. That is absolutely uh, human of you instead of doing what Dan Man did. <laughs> Made me talk to that plastic doll for hey, me. If, if 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 I was going to do it, it was only because you were going to do it as well. It had to be Dan to man <laughs> by both. Because you have one. <laughs> Hell, we could have had Jacob P in there too, right? I, I know he could yes, he could have been asking some <laughs> <You're> questions. <a> <laughs> <laughs> could have been quieter uh, but, than he is now. <laughs> yeah, no problem. Uh, but that fan round table, especially that last oh. one, uh, I I mean the laughs were always a plenty. Yes. Uh, the information from the guests was always uh, from their heart. They always gave their time. They were always very excited when I reached out leading up to, cause we would do them on a Saturday afternoon or a Sunday afternoon. I'm sorry. Su- uh, Sunday afternoon. And either or whichever. Yeah, and, and I would always reach out to just one random. I would go through, you know, either my messages or I'd, get on the old face page and float through and be like, who can I drag on and kind of make some of the fans pop and have some really good times with. And always, always, always did they pop every single time, Eric, when I asked the talent, could you be our special guest for fan round table? Some of them didn't know what it was, but when I described what it was, they absolutely popped. And they were like, I can't believe you asked me to do it. I would love to do that. I will, I will put some time aside. Um, they were as excited to come on our show as we were when they actually came on and you guys figured out who it was and all of that excitement. Yeah. Yeah. They were just excited, Eric. You have no clue, man. Uh, they, they were always so fired up, dude. I got to ask you a question. Hit me. Uh, I know we don't remember them all, you know, is that one brain cell thing, but of all of the special guests on the, on the round tables, who was your favorite, Don? There was a consensus, basically, almost uh, around the entire round table. There was a consensus that it was King Leon at one point. That that dude really was something. And I mean, Frosty has been generous and blue shoes. And we had that damn ref Bill on. And that was something in itself. And yeah. uh, But that King Leon really stands out. And I know we miss him, Eric. And as soon as you were just finishing up this question, he came right to mind, my, right to my mind. Uh, not only because of the fan roundtable, but it brings me back 
to the fucking interview I did with him and even the clip I shared not that long ago (laughs) of one El Pepe and the whole Kumite thing. Dude, who brought that up? (laughs) Was probably, um, it, it just. It has to be my favorite fan round table uh, with the, the the special guest you're speaking. Yes, of, yes, round yes. table, uh, uh, unbelievable, unbelievable. For a guy we don't even know, we we weren't even really aware of him, mm-hmm. you know. And he gave us his time, and as fun as the recorded show is, this part right here, as mm-hmm. fun as that is. I think we, as the roundtable, have had more fun after you hit what you call the pahuze. <laughs> after you stop it, I think we've had more fun with that in like five, maybe ten minutes. Because then they, it's like they're comfortable with us. Like, we're anybody. We're just a bunch of jamokes <laughs> sitting around, you know, goofing. And they're like, all right, now I can be cool with these guys because they they treated me with respect because we would do nothing other. Right. And, they, they you know, all of them, mm-hmm. all of them, you know, we treat them like they're superstars and they look at themselves, hey, I'm just an indie wrestler. No, no, dude. Absolutely. We pay our money to see you. You're a superstar. Mm-hmm. That's and the way they, I look at it. They always thank us. And, and yeah. I even got a call. I even got a call, Eric. As recently as Friday night, okay, now, I won't use a name, yeah. but I, I will say this specific talent was on the card at Undeniable 3, okay? Now, on that card was a specific match, and it was Ryan Frost against Marcus San- uh, Marco Santiago, the champion, along with that damn dishonest Abe, and Ref Blue Shoes returned once again to uh, test of strength and was refing that specific match. That turned into the Waterbury screw job, my friend. You've seen yep. the footage. Yep. You've seen the I celebration for a, <laughs> a, full, uh, a full two minutes. We celebrated. We were embracing Ryan Frost winning that championship. Uh, and then shit took a wrong turn with that. Hit the fan, if you will. Fucking ref Q. That fucking ref Q. He came out with footage. Uh, they rewound, and there was the likes of Jiggy Sosa and Dishonest Abe. They come out Fuck squawking. They got stolen. Uh, the, the belt was stolen away from them. Marco Santi, uh, uh, ref Gina looks at the footage. She restarts the match. Marco Santiago does some stupid shit to Frost. One, two, three. He retains the belt. We lose our entire shit. The roller coaster of emotions was like this at Undeniable 3. Now, me saying all of that, I had a talent call me on Friday night and watch one of these fan week stirring the pots that's happened throughout the week, okay? He watched a full episode of one of these specifically. And he heard the story between myself and my guest of what we felt and how the fans felt during after the just the the pure hatred of Ryan Frost getting that belt stolen away from him, uh, but even the likes of Joey G and company, <laughs> they, they they found themselves in a little depression. They couldn't even go to Taco Bell, their favorite place, their favorite choice, you know, um, of of recreation post event where they celebrate. The winnings of maybe said Ryan Frost or whatever, if that actually happened. But one of the talents that was involved in all of that called me and was like, you know what, man? That put that in perspective that I never even looked at before. Never even. And I know we try to look at from the fans' perspectives. We want to do a good job. You know, maybe the GM said, that was awesome. Maybe X wrestler said, that was great. You guys really pulled them in. They can say all of these good things to uplift the talent as they ask them, how do you think it went? They could walk away thinking it went really well. But then I do an episode. They hear our perspective and it hit him just a little bit different, a little bit harder. 
And he was like, son of a bitch. I really, I didn't really realize that us, us little guys in independent wrestling in a test of strength organization pulls you guys in like that and takes us on that ride. And I told him, that's wrestling, my man. It doesn't matter if it's on the big screen or not. We enjoy our wrestling. We enjoy those storylines. We're going to take those rides with you guys. All right? Yes. So I know I said a lot right there. Oh, no. That, dude, I want to say three. That perspective from a talent calling me, it just chills just speaking about it. Like, are, are you effing kidding me right now? I would almost rather 100 seats over 100,000 seats. Because it's that intimacy, Don. We, we, you know, you, you're talking about the connection. It's easier to make a connection when you're five feet away from the guy than if you're, you know, up in the nosebleeds and you can't. How many indie shows have you been to where, okay, you're in the back row this time? Right. Yet the wrestlers make the rounds and they'll go through the seats. They'll go through the back row to make sure they get to everybody. Are you kidding me? You don't see that at the big show. You know, I, I love how they make the fans a part of the show, you know, make them feel like they're a part of the show. You know, they, they come up. It's not just the high five, which is great. Don't get me wrong. I love the high fives as much. And I'm, I'm going to be 46. And I, I, I get Jones over a <laughs> high five. But you know the moment. You, remember, you were there for the moment when Logan Black took me for a march around the ring. You think I wasn't excited? You know, it, that that was, it's that interaction with the fans that you don't get at those other shows. You might get a high five at a WWE. If you're on the rail, you, you've got to be on the rail. Otherwise, you're not going to get that. But you can be three rows deep at a PVP or test of strength or whatever, and they're going to make you aware that they're aware of you. And... Mm -hmm. You know, there's nothing better. It's just, it's, I, I love indie wrestling. I really do. <laughs> I, don't, I, just, I don't know what to say. <laughs> uh, that's the fifth and new title. I love, I love indie <laughs> wrestling. I really do. I know we had a funnier one at the very origin of the titles, but I think that's going to be the one. <clears throat> now, we've been chit-chatting for almost an hour and a half here. I knew it was going to go. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Hour, hour 22 minutes here, and I knew it was going to go very easy. I wanted to not talk about a specific connection because I wanted to wait to bring us to the tail end of this. And that is a connection of one Foggy. The Fogman. If you look him up on your face page, you type in The Fogman. <laughs> I shit you not. He's a guy who's been in wrestling for approximately 30 years now, doing the indie stuff, going to the shows, Doing even in the ECW days when they were on fire um, and all of that stuff. He's been through so many promotions and talk about countless. That guy has yeah. been to countless amounts of shows. Um, <laughs> and this week. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I think he's been to 20 just in a three day weekend. Um, talk to us about the connection that you made with the fog man and. You've already mentioned Center Ring, which you cannot, and please uh, still incorporate because he's, <laughs> he's Center Ring. Right. Um, <laughs> talk to us about meeting Foggy um, and just how cool he was because he doesn't have to be cool with people because he's trying to do his thing, but he wants to have fun as a fan too. He's not a guy who's going there to do his job or do his thing, if you will. Right. But right. he's a fan he's just like one of us, yeah. and he wants to watch the shows. So bring us in on your friendship with Foggy. Day one. June of 17. Intermission hits. I'm walking by the entrance ramp. There's a guy with his pointy goatee. Stands up. And he says, hey, how you doing? I'm like, good, how you doing? He says, first time? I says, yeah. He says, hey, make sure you check out Center Ring on YouTube. Uh, it's my YouTube channel. We, you know, we, we do stuff for independent wrestling. Right. All right, cool. 
I'm fog man, by the way. I'm like, what the fuck is a fog man? I didn't know. <laughs> so I went back and I sat down and, and this is, a, who is that? I said, fog man. I'm like, I don't know what that is, but that's one. And then at the end of it, something had spilled out of the ring. You know where I'm going with this one. Something spilled out of the ring right near the entrance ramp. This mf -er, didn't move an inch <laughs> after yeah. the event. I said, Hey, you almost got taken out there. I don't move for anybody. Okay. Second show I see him at. And the second show I see him at. Hey, did you check out my channel? No, I didn't get a chance to. To be honest, I didn't know who this guy was. I didn't. I went home and I checked it out. That was the second show. I probably can count on one hand and have fingers left over how many episodes I've missed since that day. I've been lucky enough to be invited on twice. Once with Bull Dread as the guest and once with Ryan Frost as the guest. Two of my... I love Bull Dread. Who doesn't? Sweetheart of a guy. Sorry to ruin the gimmick, Dread, but and, <laughs> and and Ryan Frost, who we already went over how I feel about Ryan Frost, and it was from that that night especially. And I've had Frosty, I mean Foggy, use my footage on his show when he didn't even really know who I was. Hey, can I use that? Or he just put it on there, which I don't care. I do it for the wrestlers anyway, so you know, feel free. And he put my photos up. He, When I put together a video, he would put it up. He's asked me to record when he couldn't be there. Now I feel like I'm, I got to make sure I'm getting extra good footage. <laughs> you know how that feels. <laughs> you know, to where he asked me to be on. I'm like, what? Yeah, come sit on the couch. You know, we'll, we'll have you on. And then there's this big, burly, <laughs> bull dread sitting there. Because he's half the man he used to be now. <laughs> so when he sat down, I was like, oh, crap. And he's talking about Brian Frost in the interview. And I'm not saying that Ryan, Fry, Ryan Frost and I look like each other. But we're both bald. And at the time, I had a close-knit beard. I don't want him having some kind of PST, PTSD or something and taking oh. it out on me. You know, I just no, you can. Man. You continue. I just got to step over there. Please continue, my friend. Uh, you know, and then I can't not go to a show and say hi to Foggy. How do you not do that? You know, I got to talk to Fog, see Bruce, you know, say hi to them. Uh, I always, I thank Foggy for kind of influencing me to do what I'm doing with my YouTube channel now. You know, it, 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 if it weren't for Fog and for you, I, and I know you don't like when people do this and they thank you and everything else, but if it weren't for the two of you, I wouldn't, I probably wouldn't have started the YouTube channel because you made me feel more comfortable doing this, sitting in front of a camera. You've helped me more than anybody knows because you know how much you've helped me with how to do it, what to do, where to go. But so is Foggy to a point, you know, and one of the things I love about Fog is, you, like you said, he's a fan at heart, whether he's working or not. Right. When you're yeah. watching his footage yeah, now on it's Center Ring, it's so and he's filming the, sh the matches, is there anything better than Foggy commentary? <laughs> Especially when he gets a, jo a laugh out of his own jokes. It's like, well, at least he's <laughs> laughing, right? <laughs> I found it funny, though that's all that mattered. I no, I have nothing but love for Foggy because he, he came the first person I met at PvP was Fogman. And here we are five years later, and he's one of my favorite people. He really is. I know I say that a lot, but you know, he's he really is one of my favorite people. I love Foggy. Uh definitely have some love. For Foggy, that's for sure. Okay. Um, no thank you. Uh, you keep those there. They're collecting rocks over there. Uh, <laughs> 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 
Look at this big rock. Oh, wow. Look at that big rock. Uh, Eric, we've had a great, great time sitting here. Uh, I know the, the animals have been in and out. Uh, we've had a great time speaking wrestling. The connections with Eric and some of those uh, outside of the ring connections that happen organically. And we were speaking upon what you're doing with the videos and getting a channel going and such. And you keep handing me rocks and more rocks and more rocks. Uh, so before I, <laughs> before I let you go, uh, please tell the people where they can check out your stuff on the YouTube. Uh, if you want them to look you up on the old face page, because I know you, you share some stuff over there. If you've got a porn hub that's active, uh, you know, she, Oh, okay. I'm sorry, friend Anissa. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, give us some details where you can find your stuff and be able to check out what you got going on. Look, I'm just me on Insta uh, on Facebook. Just Eric Hunting. If you want to see the stupidness I put there, that's fine. My Instagram is more geared towards my wrestling. I don't put a lot of the family stuff on there. That's kind of where I, I generate my wrestling stuff. And that's uh, E-Man Babu. Uh, I won't get into why, because <laughs> it's hard to understand, but it's E-Man Babu, all one word, and uh, you'll see my some of my wrestling stuff, uh, and a lot of that's geared towards the connections that we have been talking about through this whole thing. Uh, it's like, you know, me with said wrestler, me with, you know, somebody who's in the industry, fans, you know, brothers, you know, whatever. Um, then there's my YouTube channel. And that's Eric Hunting from Parts Unknown. And there's less than 20 videos on there now, I think. Uh, we're still building. It's, yeah, it's, it's growing, but it's going to take a little while. Uh, and, you know, if you, if you go to that, you know how they say it. Like, comment, subscribe. Ring the bell so that you get notified when I finally do put something up there. Uh, I'm tr I'm trying. I want to do more. It's just it's taking time. Right. Hey, it does <laughs> hey. take a little bit of time, you know. That's I don't have seventeen thousand, but you know I'm getting there. I'm gaining on you, Don. <laughs> how, how the hell, dude? I don't even know how I got a thousand. And then when they started coming in at a thousand a time in like two or three weeks, I'm like, what in the holy hell is going on around here? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so, it's yeah, crazy. Just, uh, it really is. Absolutely. Uh, once that algorithm starts kicking, though, you'll you'll start seeing you'll start seeing some of them numbers jumping up, my man. Don't you sweat it. I, you know what? I don't. I'm trying not to stress about it. I'm doing what I like to do it when I can mm -hmm. because I don't go to a show every week. I can't. So I there. I want to do some side projects, you know, of stuff going on around wrestling. I did with the Tom Burke thing. That was a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. And that's a connection because of you. You want to talk about connections. That's one because of you. Because if it weren't for you, I wouldn't have got to really get to know who Tom Burke was. And I, I think I talked to that guy at least once a week now. <laughs> who am I? I'm nobody. So it's crazy, as right? you say, I'm just a dude with a camera, right? That's all I am. I'm a dude with a phone. That's all. So... <laughs> You know, I, I'm trying to, I want to do some other things. It's just a matter of finding the time. You know, I I got a, a weird work schedule that doesn't really allow me to do things during the week. And, you know, then you got time with the family on the weekend. So it's kind of hard to do it unless that time with the family is wrestling, which we got one coming up. We got PVP <laughs> coming up on Saturday. And possibly I may be at Shut Up and Wrestle on Sunday. Oh, wow. That That's a possibility. I don't. Don't iron me in on that one, but uh, well, I I wouldn't uh, I I won't hold you to your word because I know we can't make all the shows. Uh, my love and I were doing the 19th at Coliseum in Bridgeport, the 20th at Blood Sweat Tears in Bridgeport, the 21st at Shut Up Rest Shut Up and Wrestle in Holyoke. So that'll be a busy weekend. Uh, how you doing it? <laughs> <laughs> I wish I could. I wish I could, but I can't. <laughs> Uh, friend Eric, thank you for spending the time, setting some time aside to talk to us, capping off Fan Week in a very fine fashion. 
Uh, you told us some great stories about the connections that you have with the talents that we uh, come come to know and love and see perform in the ring. That's why we go to see these guys and girls do the crazy shit we can't do physically and whatnot. And these uh, connections, uh, relationships, friendships, networking that happen out of it is just like super duper like bonus that you never even seen coming from a freaking mile away. I, I would, I would never in a million years think I would know some of these wrestlers the way that I know them, mm-hmm. you know, and Absolutely. I, I, I think I said it before. I look at these guys on this level. I look at them as like I, the same way I would as the guys that are on that upper level that they, if they're in that ring, they're superstars to me. So any any second that they give to me, I I try to pay it forward to back to them as best I can. There's a reason why I have probably over a hundred wrestling shirts. We didn't even get into that addiction that happened during COVID. Thanks a lot, COVID. <laughs> but I uh, yeah, that became opening mystery crates. That became buying like 32 Logan black shirts at a clip. Uh, that became all sorts of uh, things, but the point being though, the real big point behind that though, Eric is, yeah, you want the merch. Yeah, you want to see. It was all about supporting. Supporting, yep. es- es- Especially, let's be honest, Eric. That's their only job for F sake. I mean, wrestling was their only income. So when you're doing this, you're giving them the income. You're helping them, uh, you know, put food on the table, help yeah. them pay their their light bill. And pay their rent and stuff because that's their only damn job. So with all, all of the shirts and stuff, and I know it was kind of a, a, a crazy obsession there for a minute, maybe a, <laughs> maybe two minutes. It was there was always behind all of that. There was always the uh, mindset of I want to support my favorite wrestlers in a time of need, right? And I know we all need the help, but you were doing that for the for the the, the wrestlers out there. Did did what I thought I could, you know, even when I probably shouldn't have been, but still did it, <laughs> you know. <laughs> it probably could have gone somewhere else, but, you know. It, again, this is an obsession. It's an addiction. It's something I've been a part of since I was four years old. I've always loved wrestling. And, you know, I guess a, a, at the end of the day, you can thank my parents for that. You can blame my parents. Because they got me into it, you know, so it's their fault. <laughs> it's not my fault. It's their fault. <laughs> I just, I just take it a little bit more seriously than some other people do. I, I just, I, I, you know, and, and my channel has a motto, and that's we build them up, we don't tear them down. And if I, if I can help promote a wrestler. I'll do what I can. I mean, again, who am I? I'm, but if I got a YouTube channel, I'm somewhat of an influencer. So I'm trying to do my part of pushing, pushing that talent. You know, what you know, whether it's somebody brand new, like I don't know, say Jack Dalton, who I don't know why, but for some reason I latched onto that kid right from the first time I saw him. It shut up. You know, he's I, just some guy. He, well, no, no, he's the guy. Not some hey, guy. He's, he's, the guy. He, he, he's just some guy. Come on. He's the guy and he's got the stroke. But <laughs> let's not get into that. That's a family show. <laughs> no, not that stroke. <laughs> but or be, you know, Logan Black, who's been doing it for you know close to 20 years. It doesn't matter how long he's been doing it. He's a kick-ass wrestler and he's a great personality. Inside and outside of that ring, I, I'm going to promote him to the moon. So that's what I do, I guess. Uh, no, that is what you do. You build them up and don't tear them down. A uh, great motto to have, my friend. Uh, boys and girls, we've had a fine, and I do mean a fine conversation with our bro buffet, Eric Hunting. It's been <laughs> it's been great. Uh, ch- Holy shit! I think a pterodactyl just flew into my face. Said Delta on the side of it. Holy shit sticks. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, By the way, one of my new favorite Dawnisms is shit sticks. I don't know <laughs> when this started, 
<laughs> but I love <laughs> shit sticks. I, I love it. <laughs> However, we're bros. We're brothers. We're we're best friends. We're we're tighter than most. You using this F A H K <laughs> business. <laughs> I don't know when you thought it was okay, <laughs> but somebody might have to put a boot in an ass. I'm just saying. There'll be a money order in for some royalties. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, yeah, uh, I'm sorry. I've seen how your sorries work with uh, some of the talent there, pal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but Good. I mean... Proceed. When you when you, you when you try to, <laughs> when you try to give a roll of pennies to a Russian and he's not accepting yeah. said roll of pennies. Yeah, how'd that work out for you? Yeah, uh, but <laughs> you know this is a different story. I'll try to be better. I swear, <laughs> I'll try to be better. Yeah, right. um, <laughs> uh, we'll get those uh, that monetize that money order for some royalties to you. As just saying, I'm just saying, you're lucky. I love you. That's all I'm saying. You're lucky okay. I love you. I'll make sure I put it in. I'll make sure I put it into the name of friend Anissa. So, uh, of uh, course, no. I don't even get that. Thanks, <laughs> thanks a lot. <laughs> oh, Learned <no>. again. <laughs> Fine conversation we have. What a odd ending. I did not expect to pay royalties to one friend Anissa. Uh, but here we are. <laughs> uh, boys and girls, this is stirring the pot. And we have capped off. This is the finish line of an amazing week of speaking to the fans, getting their insight, getting their perspective, getting their stories of some of their faves and talking those connections we make at the shows and sometimes that overflow outside that ring and we get those private messages we get maybe a ryan frost coming to a joey g's birthday holy <laughs> crap the fuck i mean <laughs> who saw that coming uh but not this guy <laughs> <laughs> we have had an amazing week and it was a great cap off with our dear friend eric and uh we wouldn't want to cap it off any other way this is starting the pot with don kincaid and my very special guest friend Eric from Parts Unknown. Thank you so much, my man. Thank you, Don. <laughs>